Hey everybody, thanks for tuning into Exploring Reality. Um, today we're going to be having a fun discussion between my two friends Tim and Kyle and my other two friends Danny and J. Mike on the logical problem of evil. I'm going to bring them up, um, but before I do that, just a friendly reminder, content-wise it's going to be slow leading up to March 29th, which is my debate with Matt Thulahunty. Um, I got a surgery coming up on Wednesday, so with the combination of debate prep and surgery, um, I'll probably just be at my A for the next month, but know that it's not me just kind of taking a kickback and doing nothing. I just got a lot of stuff going on. With that, um, I'm going to bring my guests on and we'll get kind of started. And um, where's, oh, I missed J. Mike, my bad. And J. Mike's camera's on the fritz, so he won't be here, but just imagine you see that luscious beard there. <laughs> um, it's also, it's good. It's kind of good for me in a sense, like I'm, I'm dealing with like a gratuitous problem of uh, back pain and so i get to now be like a lot more comfortable so, there you go yeah so i'll i'll use it to my advantage nice all right well tim everybody knows who you are but just a uh, quick remind everybody who doesn't yeah. know who you are what you're about plug your stuff all that jazz perfect yeah well thank you fan uh for having me on and everyone else thank you for coming to participate in this yeah my name is tim uh, I run the channel Invoking Theism, and uh, yeah, I'm just another person in the space whose uh, interests are mainly revolving around science, natural theology, some of the more deeper philosophy of religion topics, things concerning metaphysics, philosophy of science, and whatnot. Um, I also recently started an organization of my own called Doxastic Mastery, uh, Doxastic, Doxastic Attitudes Relating to Belief and things like that. It's helping people master the things that are part of their worldview, not just know that they believe them, but actually get mastery under those things. And so that's another uh, endeavor that I've been doing uh, alongside everything else that I'm doing. And uh, yeah, my goals for today is to really have a really fun discussion. Problem of evil is really something, or just anything concerning arguments from evil is something that is probably my favorite thing to discuss, like top five. So I'm really happy to be here today. Thank you for having me on. Um, Danny, everybody knows who you are after uh, we debunked you when <laughs> talking <laughs> about IP. Just kidding. <laughs> um, no, Danny's a good friend of mine. Danny, just go ahead and plug your stuff. I forgot to change the uh, thumbnail, so I'm sorry about that. No, that's fine. I'm, I just wanted to get on camera to show that I'm a real boy. Um, <laughs> that's some cartoon. Uh, but yeah, I'm Danny. Um, it's uh, I've been a, I'm a victim of the channel, as, as he said. Um, but I'm glad to be here anyways. So You're not um, a victim. We love you. That's, that's funny. All right, Jay Mike, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I'm, I don't have like any relevant background in philosophy. I just enjoy it. Um, uh, my background's in computer programming. Uh, so I don't know if that really aids me very much in these conversations, but I do, do, uh, enjoy these conversations, but, uh, I mainly do axioms on trial, which is just kind of me and my buddy cease just kind of shooting the shit, either arguing with each other or, um, you know, talking about different, uh, things in philosophy of mind or philosophy of religion. Um, and then as we kind of we, we progress through these conversations, we try to learn as much more, uh, learn more to kind of add. And then I also do atheist experience uh, from time to time. Nice. And um, if it means anything, you know, J. Mike, I, I think you're one of the, the most well-read and articulate atheists in the online spheres. So. Well, I would I wouldn't give myself that praise, but I will take your praise. Fair enough. Uh, I get that I think, completely. I think the circle, like Danny and a lot of people um, that I've talked to. Fortunately, the internet are some pretty brilliant people either on the yeah. theistic or atheist side. So for sure, credit, credit, credits do. 100%. Yeah, no, that, that, that goes to Danny as well. All right, Kyle, everybody knows who you are too, but go for it, man. Plug your stuff. Plus, you, you also got a new blog clip like area too. So yeah, like so I'm my name's Kyle Allender. I run the Christian Idealism YouTube channel. My channel is mostly just philosophy related. Um, I'm probably, I don't know, does anyone else here? Is anyone else an undergrad? Or I know Danny, you, do you have a, I think Danny has a master's degree in philosophy. So but yeah, I'm, I'm actually, I'm an undergraduate in philosophy. So hopefully by next year, I'll have a degree in it. <laughs> um, I specialize mostly in the philosophy of science. Although like Tim, I also like to study philosophy of religion, specifically problem evil related stuff is what I, I would take the same view, which is like, it's one of the top five things I like to discuss. Um, so yeah. And I'm, you know, I'm a Christian theist, of course. That's why it's called Christian idealism. And I also run a blog as well that I've been posting stuff on there. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what I do. Awesome. 
Cool. Okay, so you guys are going to talk about the logical problem of evil today. Um, J. Mike and Danny, you guys can kind of start off by just articulating the various formulations of the argument that you guys have put up on this. And I'm going to bow out um, after I stick out, but I figured you guys can give you formulations, talk about some of the consequences. Tim and Kyle might ask some questions to clarify some things, and then you guys can kind of swing the conversation however you want to from there. And like I said, I don't anticipate having to jump in, but I will if I need to. Sound good? That sounds good. Uh, feel free to contribute, though. Um, I have no issues with that. Uh, we'll see what happens. But I think Tim and Kyle, I don't want to do a three-on-one, and Tim and Kyle are not going to take anything. <laughs> I know I don't, he, we don't see it that way, but you're free to contribute is what we're saying. Yeah. Oh, no, no, I get that. Plus, Tim and Kyle aren't going to say anything. I'm not going to say anything Tim and Kyle are not going to say, and they're going to say more things than I could possibly add in since they're better at this stuff than I am too. So, yeah. All right. Well, Danny and J. Mike, go ahead. I'm going to bow out, and then I'll hop in if I need to. All right. Um, I guess I'll sort of outline the issues I see it in. Um, I know J. Mike and I are like-minded. There might be some differences, but I'm not aware of those differences. So um, uh, I guess I could start with what a logical problem of evil would be in, as opposed to, I guess, a non-logical problem of evil, which some people call the evidential problem of evil. Um, so uh, it's our position, which some that the person that's defending a logical problem of evil is showing that there's an impossibility of a kind. There's some kind of contradiction with the nature of God, specifically properties like omnipotence, omniscience, and omnibenevolence, with um, not only the existence of evil, but even the possibility of evil, at least in my view. I don't think that with an, you know, given my understanding with the omni properties that evil is even possible. Now, um, this is a kind of a more serious claim than people that are running the evidential problem, which is just looking at um, how the world is, maybe looking at things like suffering or um, gratuitous evil or things like that to show that it's improbable that such a being exists. We're not making that claim. We're making the claim that it's not merely improbable. It's impossible that God exists. Now, of course, that heavily depends on how we're using the terms. And I, I imagine that we'll have to dedicate some time um, to the notion of evil that we have in mind. Um, there might even be some discussion about what um, the limits of omnipotence are, um, and such, but, or what omnibenevolence would even mean, but yeah, we're going, we're chasing a contradiction here. And so whether or not suc we're successful depends on whether or we're successful in showing a contradiction in, in, um, the Christian worldview in this case, because they're both Christians as far as I know. Um, so basically one of the central claims in ethics is how do you live the good life? What should I do in a particular dilemma? And what you're asking for is an action guiding norm. You're asking for something that all things considered um, should happen. Okay. So I live in a hurricane state. Um, I am also a teacher and I really don't like hurricanes, but the nice thing about hurricanes is that when they hit, I get at least a week off of work, okay? That is something in favor of, of hurricanes. But if I were to ask, if I were to be asked, um, what should happen? Just period, right? Like, should there be a hurricane? Is it good that there's a hurricane or not? I would say, well, look, given, even though I get off from work every time a hurricane hits, um, all things considered, hurricanes are not good, right? They shouldn't hit populated areas in my state. Um, the the evil uh, does not out, the evil outweighs the bad, right? And so there's a sense of good and evil or should or should not um, that is sort of um, uh, an all things considered sense of good and evil or right, uh, right and wrong. Um, it would be weird to say that hurricanes are good because they get me off work, even though I consider to get off work is a good thing. All things considered, it should not happen. So that is, that is the sense of right and wrong that I'm also working with, right? If I'm um, driving and I see someone, you know, dying on the side of the road, let's say they got, I don't know, um, 
maybe they got a heart attack or something on their walk. And I'm aware that they're, they're in need of medical attention. If I ask the question, what should I do? Right. I'm asking an all things considered um, question, all things considered. I'm asking, um, I'm not asking what are the pros and I'm not merely asking what are some pros and what are some cons, right? Maybe perhaps the summation of pros and cons will get me to my answer, but it definitely is a con that me having to stop on the side of the road and being late for work, that's a con. That's not good to be late for work, but that does not decisively conclude that that's what I should do, all things considered, okay? So that is what I want to say is incompatible with the existence of God. And all things considered evil or something that should not occur, I'm using evil in the normative sense, um, there's nothing with, with a God that's all-powerful and all-good and omniscient there cannot be anything in this world that all things considered should not happen. Okay. Otherwise that would guide God's actions to prevent it because how I understand omnibenevolence is that God is ultimately guided by what's good in that sense, right? If God is choosing to prevent or not prevent something, that's to say to allow something or to prevent it. Okay. He is ultimately guided by the good, good, nothing else. Right. Otherwise, something is more important than the good. And in what sense would it be omni benevolent? So um, that is so I want to say that a being that is ultimately guided by this sense of the good that knows about every event that occurs in creation and that's powerful enough to do anything logically possible um, will always prevent things that should not occur, all things considered. Otherwise, there's something else more important to God than the good. And that's how I understand it. J. Mike might, J. Mike can add on, take away, maybe whatever he wants to do. But that's how I see the issue. Yeah, no, I think that's that's good. Um, I mean, I, I want to like, I guess, point out the kind of trichotomy that's there initially is that like when we look at something like um, X is the case, and we ask like, well, should it occur or ought it not occur? It seems to kind of exhaust the normative space. Um, but there's a kind of a space left over where it's not action guiding, right? So you could say like X either ought to occur, ought not to occur, or neither uh, occur or not occur, right? And that would exhaust kind of the descriptive space. Um, and so I guess it's going to be important whether or not we have a normative notion. That's probably something we're going to uh, make sure we're we're on board with. Because um, I'll just take it if somebody, I guess, takes a descriptive notion that we're not really talking about the argu argument anymore. Um, and then further... Uh, on this, the prototo sense uh, and protan protanto sense of good or evil, um, I worry about this idea because I'm not really sure I understand your guys' axiological view. Maybe you can get into that. But by denying that, um, that there's going to be some notion where X ought to occur for some reason, and there'll be this consequence that say something like the Holocaust, um, since there are no proto prototo evils or that's being denied, isn't something that all things considered shouldn't occur. Right. There's actually like maybe you take some greater good defense or theodicy or however you want to phrase it, uh, such that it leads to a greater good. And I think about this in like kind of a crude example that if I was baking like a lasagna or something and I wanted to bake the best lasagna, that if I told my friend I was putting like evil salt into the dish uh, in a normative sense, something that should not occur. But I insisted that this will produce the best pasta or the best dish possible. And then say me and Danny get sit down and eat it. And he's like, you know what? This is really, really good. This is the best pot. This is a better pasta or the best pasta. Why did you call it evil salt? Especially since you're saying that it should not occur. Like, shouldn't you put the salt in the dish in order to get this outcome? Making it all things considered a good notion, right? A prototo good. Um, and so I, I guess one thing I'm through the little exchange that we've had, I'm more so want to inquire on your view on whether or not this is a consequence. If somebody just ends up denying that there are prototo evils, then it seems hard to see where we proceed because you're just denying one of the premises uh, and the argument that, that has its force. So I'm just curious kind of where you guys stand on that. But I think, uh, yeah, what Danny added is, is uh, sufficient. Um, Tim, Kyle, do you guys have any clarifying questions there? Because there, there's a, so many places you guys could start. Yeah. Um, so where are we at now as far as the phase of the uh, discussion? Yeah. So my my thing is, what's the argument? 
what's the connection? So you mentioned all these things, but I want to know, like, can we put into this argument to premise by premise four and to see where the contradiction comes from? Because that might be helpful moving forward. Okay. Um, so it'd be something like this. Um, a good being is ultimately guided by the good and nothing else. An all good being. That's that's just a given of only benevolence. Okay. Um, so when, so in other words, a good being is only guided by what ought to occur, all things considered, right? So when a being is deciding whether to allow something or not allow something, right, they're going to be guided on whether that event ought to occur or not occur. Everything in human history, God allowed. Okay. So it would, it would entail that everything in human history should have occurred, all things considered. But from what I understand, there, at least on, in Christianity, there are things in human history that should have not occurred, all things considered. Presumably things like sin. Okay. Now, that's, that's how I see, and there you get a contradiction, right? Okay, cool. Um, no, that's helpful. Okay, so... I think Kyle's first... frozen. Oh, there he is. How did you catch everything he said there, or you were frozen on our end? For a yeah, bit? I flickered out a little bit. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. You did, did you hear anything though? Oh no! <laughs> oh no! I love how it freezes him on like the creepiest like frame. <laughs> <laughs> there he is, Kyle. Okay. Um, you might want to try turning your uh, you're muted now, but try turning your camera like on and off often and maybe back on sometimes okay. that just helps your bandwidth yeah I'll, of... I'll try that hopefully if i don't i'll just use my phone to have this discussion last case worst case scenario okay i'm um, tim did Tom, i infect wanna... you kyle <laughs> what did you say Jimmy? i said i think i infected him you're all gonna <laughs> go down go. one at a time it's, it's, it's just gonna go boom boom boom, boom. Yeah. Um, uh, tim it sounded like you had something you wanted to ask so go ahead no i mean I mean, I like everything I heard, and I think that it there isn't ultimately like in a meta sense, there's a logic behind logical problem of evils. So, I mean, ultimately, right, you if you're gonna be casting forth a logical problem of evil and you're gonna be defending a premise that there's gonna be an impossibility, this is just necessarily gonna be Hello? the case. Yeah, hey. Oh wait, hold on. I'm gonna switch my phone. Okay. Should I wait for him to get back? That's up to y'all. Well, if you, if you guys are wanting, like, I don't know, in the document, if if you're wanting just to put the, we could put the, <clears throat> um, the argument that was in there, but I don't know if Danny assents to that formalization or not of his. I, I, I was just gonna, I was just gonna free verse what I was about to say. Okay. I was sure. just wanting to make sure everyone's in here. Kyle, you can you hear us? Yeah. Um... You good to go? Still good. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> okay, are we good? No. The logical problem oh. of StreamYard. <laughs> like, geez. Uh, it has problems oh, for me. I get an orange camera. Oh, I can't... Man. I mean, I could solve it with my with my other camera. I can't find, but um, and then Kyle. So yeah. All right, Kyle, you uh, you in? Yeah, I can barely. You know, I'm I'm literally talking on my phone, so I'll just do this. I don't know what else to do. So <laughs> we right. we're good. Okay, we're good. Okay, yeah. So what I was gonna say is that because the your guys are getting at an impossibility via that contradiction, right? Ultimately, the the weight by which you defend these premises are going to be so, 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 so much more than a more modest evidential problem. And this is going to be where this is going to get really fascinating real fast. Because when we say logical problem, right, ultimately, we need to really define exactly whose logical problem is this. And ultimately, an answer to that question is whatever theist exactly subscribes to your exact normative commitments and your exact definition of what an all good being is. Mm -hmm. Now, my question for this discussion is, is, am I that type of theist? I, I don't know. Do I have a logical problem? Does Kyle have a logical problem? Is that, the, is that a problem for Than? Is that a problem for Brian Davies? Is it a problem for Trent Doherty? Is it a problem for Rob Coons? I don't know. So far, what I want to say 
is I don't know a single theistic system that abides by any of the commitments that have been laid out thus far. So Can you I don't know those? who's the whole problem. It Can is. you name one of those and, commitments that are laid out that you don't know a single theist holds that holds to? Yeah. So for example, uh, a no norms theism like Brian Davies, God is not a moral agent. There are no guiding norms uh, by which we define God's goodness. By. And it, he completely conceives of God's on. goodness. I, am I good? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Kyle, you're good. Um, okay, I, sorry. Hold on. I think I just picked up on a miscommunication. And Danny and Tim, correct me if I'm wrong. Because um, Danny asked, Danny just sounded, it sounded like you just asked, can you name one of those commitments that I, that you think no theist holds to? Is, is that what you said? Right. The right. ones that I gave, what 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 premise did I give or, com or theistic commitment that I, I articulated or that no yeah. theist holds? Yeah, and so I interpreted what Tim said a little differently there, because Tim, correct me if I'm wrong. It sounds like what you're saying is that logical problems of evil are built upon like a set of assumptions that are intrinsically not going to work together because of some contradiction. But the but then the question is, which theist is this targeting? Is this targeting just specific, the specific theists over here? Or is it trying to say, hey, every Christian theist is going to have this issue? And it's so maybe that's a good place to start. Mm, OK, yeah, maybe maybe I wasn't clear there. Maybe I assumed too much. Yeah. So so what I'm trying to get at is within a logical problem of evil, right? It's doing more than an evidential problem, which is the logical problem is going to take the internal logic of a theistic system. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to show that that internal logic leads to a contradiction with something that we observe in the world, right? But for that internal logic to lead to that contradiction, we have to discuss what the internal logic is in the first place. And what I'm saying is there are many theisms, and I don't, and this is what I wanted to explore with you. <clears throat> Excuse me. There are, <clears throat> geez, oh, let me get a drink real quick. <clears throat> I will uh, add while you get a drink that if someone wants to deny like a normative notion, I want to Danny if you agree, but if someone just says, look, I don't okay. have like a normative notion um, or like there isn't evil in the view, then there isn't a problem of evil in that this relevant sense that we're talking about. Yeah. So, so, what, so go I'm going to finish what I'm Tim. saying and then we're going to, we're going to yeah. get into that. So what I'm saying is, is what we are doing is we're taking a theistic system a pre-existing theistic system and we're looking at the internal logic of that system and we're seeing whether or not all the parts involved end up contradicting with uh, an observation in the world but that mm -hmm. requires that we that we're actually understanding the internal logic of that system first to be able to draw that conclusion now mm -hmm. what i'm asking is i don't know if my internal logic for the theistic system that i believe in my particular theoretical commitments has anything to do with what's been articulated thus far. And that's what I mean by whose logical problem is it exactly? Because I'm going to say right now that I don't think that there is this unanimous, um, I don't think that there's a unanimous or I guess you could say um, like uni varied version of theism. Now we all talk about good and powerful and all these different things like that. But within the literature on perfect being theism, theists differ across the board about what theories of goodness, of divine goodness even mean, what, the, what, what theories around divine temporality or atemporality even mean. This is kind of what I'm talking about. So for so whose theism did you pick this up from to draw this, this contradiction? That's what I want to know. Yeah. Um, so you can find a philosopher and you can you can find Florida that will say anything, right? So I mean, like you, if here's maybe if your question is who does this argument not apply to, right? Here's the argument does not apply to these kinds of uh, theists, theists that believe their God is evil doesn't apply to them. Okay, theists that think that God is ignorant of said of, rel of these relevant events, these evil events, the argument doesn't apply to them. Okay, the uh, uh, theists that think that there are limits beyond logical limits to um, omnipotence. OK, but uh, as far, theists that maybe I mean, I mean, that's what that, I think that's it. Right. Like for me, if you and I think Jay might say the last yeah, one that there is no that there is no evil. Right. Like um, so evil God, there is no evil, ignorant of relevant events and limits to omnipotence other than logical limits. OK, those are the theists that this argument doesn't apply to. Are you one of those? 
Well, I want to ask, what makes you think that those are the only options on the table? Well, because how I'm seeing it is that um, a, a, I gave a sense of good, right? A goodness here. If we're saying God is good, we're saying that God is guided by the good. Not any. There's nothing that takes um, a higher priority than that. Okay. So then, when if God's decision making is ultimately guided by the good, in that because of that, then when He chooses to allow or disallow something, will be again guided by the the better event or the good event, not the less good or the evil event. Okay. And good here is very clearly stipulated as the relevant sense of good. When when we're asking questions like should a hurricane hit New Orleans, right? Or should I help this person in need? We're asking for a sense of good that's normative and action guiding ultimately a deontic kind of um, sense of good, right? A good a goodness that guides the action of an agent, okay? Um, and so if a being didn't know about uh, a particular event that where they should intervene had they known, I don't hold, I mean, that that will solve the problem. It's like in the case of, of that I gave where if someone's dying on the side of the road and, and I just drew past them and I didn't know, right? Um, it, I can't even make the decision um, to go help them, right? Because a necessary criteria to make a decision to do the right thing is to know what the right thing is to do, right? But so so we can just start with that. I mean, um, do you think that God is aware of every single event that has occurred and that will occur? Or yeah, but, occurring, but I, I, I think that's actually red herring to the entire point we're talking about. I'm Let's get back to goodness, because that's the property that is going to be contradicting here. The property that's going to be doing the contradicting work is the goodness. Now you can get so out of the contradiction you, by denying omniscience. That's that's fine, but ultimately, without the goodness part, those two things working together isn't going to do anything interesting for what we want this argument to do. So I'm going to grant omniscience perfectly fine. That's actually not going to be the interesting part. I want to catch on what you talked about earlier which is you said, hey, you know, every theist seems to believe that uh, God is good. And, and no, I didn't God say that. Is I didn't say that. I said there are theists that think their God is evil, right? That This argument does not apply to them. Or the theists that hold to divine goodness. Right, say. but I, I'm agreeing with you that there are theists where this yeah. argument does not apply to them, right? I gave an example, a theist that thinks their God is evil. Cool, yeah. So I didn't get to the ending of my point here. My question is still still coming. So with that being said, those who opt in for a kind of omnibenevolence that you're talking about, you you use phrases like good, guided by normative principles towards goodness, these different things like that. But there are that's not the issue. The issue is how do you understand what that good is supposed to mean? There are theories of what the divine goodness is. And so when I'm asking you, if I'm trying to then find how the internal logic of a theistic system is going to contradict somewhere, it's going to depend on what theory of divine goodness is actually a part of that system. And that's where I say you're going to have theists across the board who hold to divine goodness. So these aren't the evil God theists. These aren't the, you know, the finitist God theists. These are theists that hold to divine goodness, divine perfection in every sense but they're actually going to disagree with one another of what divine goodness means. And so when I ask you, what theistic system with what theory of divine goodness is this argument actually going after? I'm personally not aware of one um, that actually uses what you're talking about. Could you could, Can you name me some philosopher maybe who's defended this in print somewhere who holds could, this could view we, of divine goodness? Can we just focus, like, I mean, maybe I'm off here, but like, it seems like, it, your your notion of goodness is either going to be normative in that case it either ought to occur or ought not occur we can get to the prototo protanto sense or it exhausts the descriptive space where it's just not action guiding right and then in that case you know sure if someone takes some descriptive notion there might be some more work to do to draw out an issue or they might just evade the argument because it's not uh capturing the notion that we're at but would you i don't know would you agree that that like trichotomy ex exhausts the kind of space that either X ought to occur, ought not occur, or neither occur, or ought not occur. And then if you just take a normative notion, I, I think we just proceed from there. Yeah, I would love to get to that part, but I want this first part that I've been asking since the beginning to at least have some progress made in that. What, is there a particular is, system that this is targeting? What 
me naming a philosopher that takes my meta ethical view or um, the meta ethical view that I'm I'm putting forth, right? What what does that have? How does it have any kind of impact on the soundness of the argument? Well, this is supposed to be an internal contradiction. Internal to what exactly is what I'm asking? Does me naming a philosopher that takes that the sense of good that I've offered determine the soundness of the argument that I'm giving? So, so the biggest problem here is. When you're talking about oughts, you're assuming that you're assuming that God has moral obligation, and there are theistic systems where God doesn't have any moral obligations to to anything. No, so I'm wondering no. how how would you address that kind of theism where they just outright deny that God is even a moral agent, that God even has obligations to his creatures, because that completely avoids the whole ought language that this argument relies upon. First of all, it's strictly false that for any odd, it's a moral lot. There are non-moral lots. Okay, so I, I've never said anything about moral lots. Just talking about odds in general. Okay, um, so there's there's that. Um, but the how how are you, are you trying to address the question I asked? That me naming a philosopher that takes my characterization of the good does that determine determine the soundness of the argument that I'm presenting? I'm just one. I'm I'm personally like I'm not even being like meticulous or tedious here i'm personally wondering if this is supposed to be an internal contradiction like i can come up with a list of commitments that you know i can construct an argument where i can derive an internal contradiction but it's not very interesting if nobody holds those commitments anywhere what right? do you mean it's not I mean, what do you mean I, it's not very interesting well i mean it might serve as like hey don't hold these commitments or else you'll run into a contradiction but if theism is supposed to have a logical problem Right. And it's supposed to be efficacious in showing that if theists hold, you know, uh, two propositions or more than two propositions, then they're going to have to kind of give up certain properties. I at least want to know what system is this internally contradicting. Right. Maybe this, I don't might know if it's mine. Maybe this might help. This argument attacks a conception of God, not all conceptions of God. OK, the conception by which you think that God is ultimately guided by the good and nothing else, right? A conception of God by which God is not limited by anything but logical constraints. A conception of God where God is not ignorant of any particular uh, current event, okay? Now, there are other conceptions of God, right, um, where God is evil. God is dualistic, good and evil, and or has a good and evil nature, right? I'm I, the, those theists are not, as I see it, are not harmed by the argument, right? So I presume that you and um, Kyle have a conception of God where God is guided by the good and nothing else, okay? Where God is not ignorant of any particular event that's happening, right? And where God has um, no constraints in terms of uh, no constraints except logical constraints, Um now I understand that you might think there there are metaphysical constraints, and um, I can grant those. Um, but um, if there, if you have a conception of God that doesn't hold to any of those sorts of properties, the argument is just not for you. Yeah, so I think this is really good, and for me, terms and definitions and conversations like this matter a lot. I. The theist that I've mentioned previously earlier, right, Brian Davies, someone like Eleanor Stump or Marilyn McCord Adams, myself and Kyle, we all hold the divine goodness, but we actually all don't agree with what divine goodness actually entails. That, that, that the, the, the part that you're talking about, whereas, oh, well, then if, if God is supposed to be wholly good, then it means this and about these different things. That, that part, that entailment that you're drawing, um, we actually disagree, like, intra-theoretically what those entailments are. And so maybe that's a good place to go because what I'm saying is I'm just focusing on the theists who hold the divine goodness, but I'm saying that's not enough because there's different theories about what divine goodness entails. It's not just divine goodness and then you get X, Y, Z automatically. You actually need an intermediary proposition. And that intermediary proposition is gonna specify what those entailments will actually be. And what I'm saying is that intermediary proposition can actually be numerically identical to the concept of God or it can be distinct. And if it's distinct, then you need to actually bring it in to do the work that you're talking about. Do you do you think that your intermediary, intermediary proposition about what you think goodness entails is numerically identical 
to what it means to be an all good being? Or do you think it's a specification of certain ethical commitments that are true independent of whether or not this concept of God even, even uh, I'm not so sure what you're asking. I'm just saying, look, um, let me, there, what, what, how I interpret when someone tells me, um, that someone is good or some action is good or some event is good, right? Sure. Um, that all else being equal, it should occur. That's what should be done. Okay. Now, do you understand that notion of the good? So I'm going to play dumb here. Explain it to me like I'm five. Well, I'm not sure how much help I can do if you don't, if you, if you're saying that you don't know what it means to say that, or you would never say to someone at least that, yeah, I don't think this should have happened. Right. I don't know. I don't know. I honestly had to convey that kind of normative property. I mean, I could tell you other synonyms of synonymous phrases or implications. Basically, if it should occur, then if it is occurring, it's in accord with the norm. And if it's not occurring, it's out of accord with the norm. But I'm, I thought that was very fundamental. Is it to, to be, do you think there are certain things that in, in, his, in human history that should have occurred? So you're saying that, that when we say that should not have occurred, that it's conforming to a norm. If it's conforming to a norm, then there's a theory about that norm. What theory is that? I don't really, it doesn't matter what your theory is. I just want to know, would you say to someone that um, pedophilia is something that should not happen? Would you ever say that to someone? So this is actually where I exactly wanted this to go. So when we talk about God justifying norms, I'm perfectly fine talking about that um, on the well, level really of... Sorry, I'm, I'm not really sure what... It seemed like Danny asked a question and we're not answering it. Oh, yeah, no, I, I, I'm, a, I'm answering it. Yeah, yeah, I'm answering it. Well, what was it? Was it that you would do that or that you think that it shouldn't occur or should occur? It's not so, like clear so, to me what part of the question. And I'm not asking what you're. I'm saying, would you ever say it? Would you utter to? Will you tell someone? Yeah, that that crap should have not happened. Would you ever say that? And then we can just use that. It doesn't matter where your theory is. Yeah, sure. So, so let me grant. Let's say that I will never say that. Okay. What's the next part? All right. So there you have a concept. Now it might be the case that the way I use the terms are different than the way you use the terms. But so far we have we have the shared semantics because you and I would probably probably agree that um, uh, that abusing children you know like beating your children because they got a a minus on a test should not happen. Okay, now we might you're right we might have very different theories about what that means or what that entails, but we can at least agree on the semantics. Okay, so now I'm wondering um, if whatever your concept there that's behind those terms. Is that something that God is sensitive, sensitive to, or God would agree with you on? So oh, take an perfect. example. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. So, so I do want to hop into that. I'm going to ask you a question here. Then you can answer that question. And then I want to open up the floor so that other people can have more time to talk here. But I really do like it. And we're going to, we're going to couch on this sure. for a while. I'm actually not going to let, I'm not going to leave this one alone. Okay, hold yeah, on. So, so I'm, 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 I'm going to come question to this answered one. After you, after you uh, ask your question, because I'm curious on what the answer is. That seems pretty crucial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, sorry, Danny. Okay, yeah. So, sorry, Danny. Ask that question again. Yeah, so. Oh, is it, is it something that God is sensitive to, right? That the same, well, or God would agree with you on. God right? would so agree if with you God, yeah, I don't think that, like, I think that if you told God, I think that it's wrong, or it should, by wrong, I mean, it shouldn't happen that parents beat their children for making an A minus on a test, like bruising, laceration, kind of beating, right? Um, would God look at you and like, I don't know what you're talking about. Would God look at you and be like, I agree. What would his response be? Yeah. So my answer to that is it's really all going to depend. I need you to rigorously define should in, in this example. And the reason why I'm asking, right. And this is a legitimate question because this is what we do in philosophy. Like this is what I wrote down. Primitive. Well, no, this is, this is what I wrote down. And, and it's really not actually. So this is what I wrote down. I wrote down should, and this is something I was confused about. When you, when you, when Danny, when you went over your opening and you talked about ethical claims and these are talking about the norms, right? So we're talking about uh, normative guiding motivations and things like that. We're on the same, same page as that. When you said should, I wrote equals good question mark and then evil equals should or should not. So something is wrong when it, should occur something is evil when it should not occur now this is my question with that because we're going off of this pro toto pro tanto kind of stuff like that 
And barring whether or not that is something that is even relevant to a God justifying norms, we'll get to that part of the conversation. Um, you talked about uh, hurricanes and how one of the goods that a hurricane does produce is is some some minor personal convenience of not being able to go to school for a week. But then you said, but you know, all things being considered, it should not happen. It seems like the work that that should not happen. It seems like the underlying norm here is more so off. Uh, is more so a balancing off condition about now. Look, ethical look this is, judgments. This is, let me tell you why all of this is irrelevant. Because you are using the. I'm not using my my sense of the terms. No longer matter because you would tell someone right that beating a child for making an A minus on a test should not happen. So suddenly your moral theory is in place, not mine. You don't need to act. We could have very different moral theories, but the, the thing is, is that you're using the same semantics. And so I'm just wondering, would Jesus or would God utter the same expression? Would Jesus utter the same expression that um, beating your child for an A minus on a test should not happen? Would he utter that? Never mind the theory. I'm just asking whether, whether he, would he use those terms? Yeah. So it's interesting. About my theory. Well, that's what's most much most relevant here because I haven't even discussed anything about my only own personal beliefs here, which goes into the internal contradiction thing that we're trying to get to. I'm more so trying to find basically explicit clarification of the terms you're using so that I can actually aid this discussion better. So we can actually have some progress. You don't need here. to do that because you uh, you and I agree on the semantics. And now we can just use your theory. I don't think I, the reason why I'm asking is I don't think I, I have a quite clear understanding of the theory under working here. When I asked you about- I'm not, We're using your theory. Your theory. You would say to someone, right? You would say someone, Tim, I think, be, um, I believe that beating your child over an A minus should not happen. You told me you would say that. I'm just wondering, right, if Jesus would say that or utter you, that. You, what I what I recall is you asked me if I would ever utter whether or not that should happen, whether I would just whether I would in that moment be sensitive enough to not say anything. That's say very it. different than me uttering my own commitments about this. So yeah. I took it as a sensitivity point, not a point about my own. Uh, okay, uh, let me let me repeat the question. Maybe I wasn't. You have the same term usage, and then he's just trying to see if that term usage is applicable to God, right? Like exactly. Well, that's that's exactly what I'm doing when I'm trying to clarify here. So maybe maybe this is where we're missing each other because my clarification about should being relevant to balancing off was something that I caught in Danny, your original example you used when you talked about should relating to this proto sense, relating to the idea that, hey, there are some goods that I can get if a hurricane this happens. This is no longer germane to the question I'm asking. If you put your trust in me for a second, allow me to go through this. I trust you, Tim. I go promise, ahead. I promise you, we'll, we'll, you'll see the relevance. Okay. So, so, yeah, you talk about should. Should is good. Should not is evil. So should is right. Should not is wrong. And then you talked about how an example that you use, an empirical example, would be a hurricane. But you said all things considered, just because I'm able to get some minor personal convenience of being off of school for a week, doesn't mean that that should have occurred. Now that's important because what that tells me is this is actually operating under what's called, what Marilyn McCord Adams actually points out, what's called a value parts paradigm versus a value holes paradigm approach to the values of certain situations. Whether or not we can say certain situations are right or wrong. And this is why I'm asking, which is if it's a balancing off condition, a balancing off condition is where the negative value parts uh, either outweigh or offset the positive value parts or vice versa. And it sounds like you in your situation, when you say all things considered, it's sh something should not happen is if the negative consequences, the negative value parts outweigh, there are more than them, than there are good value parts. That's important because this is explicitly within the literature on the problem of evil. There are multiple theists who deny that this is applicable to God. I'm, I That's don't see why how I'm this talking about this. the question I'm asking you. It it does because what do, I what do you think say, I'm asking you? What do you think I'm asking you? Okay, clarify. 
since you said earlier that I you would utter the the English terms, the English statement, beating your children because they got an A minus should not happen. I'm wondering if how if Jesus would give the same utterance. Would Jesus say is this some the semantics, the terms? If he were to be right next to you, say the same thing. And of course, resuming Jesus is God. Yeah, sure. So, I so if you if you want my what might seem like a tedious answer to this, I that will be my actual true answer to this. But it might be not an answer you not you might not like. But it's that's it's the true one. I mean, is there any way that you could say like he would say this? Yeah, he like because, he would say that or he or wouldn't. Say that. He wouldn't say this because because it's it's not not yeah. really rude, but it's confusing for me. Um, and probably Danny as well to know what part of the question you're answering. Not say, it could be a failure on our part, but if you start with that qualifier, then we know like what you're elucidating upon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if I can interject a little bit here, it sounds like, and may and again maybe I'm wrong. I'm the dumbest person in the room, <laughs> mm -hmm. but um, I feel like a big part of the miscommunication or the talking past each other that's happening right here. Here, it could be in virtue of a difference in axiology and there might be some misunderstandings talking past each other with regards to axiology now look, if you guys look, watch this watch this if i ask you would a toddler make gurgling noises right you don't have to know if they meant something by it you don't have to have a theory of what gurgling noises are or like you don't I'm just asking, would toddlers make the noises, the gargling noises? And I would say, yes, I've heard, so you, we've all heard toddlers make gurgling noises. So in the same way, it's a, some, it's a question about semantics. Would Jesus utter the same statement as you, right? That um, punishing or, you know, beating your children for an A minus on a test should not happen. Or would he not say that? So, Maybe what would, be, what would be helpful for moving forward from that question is it, why don't we outline what the consequences are if the answer is yes or no to that answer? Okay, okay. So, okay. This is because, okay. because let me, let me, let me, I can, I'm putting myself, I'm putting myself in your shoes, Danny, and I would want somebody to answer yes or no to that question without them knowing the consequences to what I, where I'm going with it. But I can also put myself in the shoes of Tim. And, and and um kyle and be like well so i want to clarify on on because okay. th they're actually within within meta ethics there's this idea called the semantic thesis and what the semantic thesis basically says and i think this is what you're getting at danny is this notion that what it means for a reason or judgment to be a moral one is that it has authoritative normativity no, i'm not saying anything like that i'm just asking that's exactly that I no, mean, but you, no, we're talking. No, no, no. Theory. We're talking about semantic. A you mentioned semantic. I am bringing up the fact that there is literally an entire literature on, on the semantic thesis, and that's exactly what that's we're getting. That's not at. what I'm bringing up. I'm telling you what I'm not bringing up. I'm not bringing that up. I'm just saying, would Jesus make those noises? Yeah, I don't. Know, I guess I'm really confused why this is difficult because it's just like we understood the first question, and then like, where does the incoherence or where does it become like? not a well-formed statement you know when no no none of us want to none of us want to say that i'm yeah i'm really asking the questions of somehow confuses stuff and it doesn't seem confusing to me i mean i'm obviously an atheist so maybe maybe there's that yeah but, well we we can go and, and, I, and i like i like fans i like fans interjection there yeah we can we can go and, and and entertain both sides of that question what happens if jesus says yes what happens if jesus says no but before that even happened i just wanted to know if sh if the language of should here is is has any undertones of a balancing off understanding yeah. of okay well it, so when you when you use the word should earlier about the hurricane and things like that. It did seem like you were That's, balancing off value. You're parts. talking about what you would say. You said that you would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But here's here's the difference. It depends on on on. It depends on what situ what the context by which I am actually using the word should in that situation. Because if if should here is taking on a very specific notion such as balancing off, that's the most relevant part to the conversation about evil, whether or not 
I would have a preference towards this this X event. Okay, or this so let me y give a concrete example in history. That's more so what I'm trying to clarify. Let me, let me give a concrete area in history. Okay, so um, when Hitler invaded Poland, okay, he didn't just go after Jews. He went after Polish children that looked Aryan. He confiscated. He literally tore children away, right, um, from their families if they looked Aryan, and then reconditioned them to be German, right? So basically split families. And these were not Jews. They were, these were Poles, okay? So we're not talking about the Holocaust. I just thought that was interesting. I learned it a couple weeks ago, okay? Now, I would say, right, that that should have not happened. I think you would say it should have not happened. Now, we can mean terribly different things by that. Our meta ethics could be as far as the East is from the West, but we would both say it, okay? Hopefully, now, I'm just wondering, would Jesus say such a thing? Would he say that what the Germans did to the Polish children that looked Aryan, right? And when they, when they broke down families, would Jesus say that should have not happened? Yeah, sure. Let's go with okay. that. Great. Okay. So now there's a notion there, okay, of should that we can use. We don't need to go into the theory anymore, okay? Because... For which parts of the discussion? We, we, when you presumably you agree with Jesus, and y'all have the same theory of what an ought is, okay? And we the the point is is that um, is Jesus guided when or is God I should say is God guided by what should happen or what shouldn't happen using the same sense of should as the the, the where Jesus would express that pull, ripping families apart shouldn't happen. I am perfectly fine saying no. Okay, so let me get to the conclusion, and then we'll ha we'll have to discuss this. But I think the I'm oh, not we will absolutely. This. That's what I'm trying to get to. Yeah, yeah I'm not. Expect, I have we have. This is what we have to talk about. But it seems like that by that conclusion, I don't see. It's hard for me to un even understand what you mean by saying that God is all good here, and that's what we have to now. Right, I'm confused, exactly. Right? Because a thousand percent. Okay, because what what you're committed to, it sounds like, is that God believes that those. Polish children should not be, it would be better, right? Or I'm going to stick with the language of should. Um, God Ooh, believes that, there you go. I yeah, there. if God, God Ooh. believes that the Polish children shouldn't be taken away from their families, right? But there's something more important than what should or shouldn't happen to God. I right yeah so again because you just wanted us to just enunciate the, the the noises that make the word should i'm still left under wondering what should even means in this in this scenario uh desi desired for its own sake well you meant. um uh, offsets it well that's see but every but every time i tried to i tried to get into that it was this we kind of went in this rigmarole so i want to kind of get more but myopic about what we're talking about here because that's ultimately what's going to matter because we can talk about desire we can talk about uh means to ends we can talk about preference structure do we mean balancing off do we mean um you know uh, intrinsically valuable in instrumentally valuable these are the things that are going to be built into understanding what should actually means in this situation that's what i want to discuss and that's why i want to open up the floor because i don't want to keep going back and forth on this point because it's this point that's going to be per pertinent because once we understand if there's a difference between how we understand should, this argument's going to break down immediately, right? And it's not going to apply to me, and it's definitely not going to apply to Kyle. So I want to bring in, I want to bring in Kyle on this. We'll, 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 we're definitely not done discussing that. I'm not letting you off the hook on that one. But I'm going to bring Kyle in on this. Well, I mean, I think we made progress in one sense of like oh, trying absolutely. to understand this notion, but I'm I'm now like just more confused on the view. So I guess it might be better for. Really, really quick, just for the yeah. audience, for the audience, because it, it looks like some people are, well, some people are confused and some people are, I got messages from some people, from some people being like, wait, what the heck is actually happening here? Um, what's at stake when we answer that question? Would Jesus utter this phrase? Um, yeah. Children shouldn't be beat. Like, what's at stake there for, for the audience? I think so, that's going to be helpful for them. So imagine... Um, I hope I'm not long-winded here and you can interrupt me if I am. But imagine an omni-greedy being. And what I mean by this is that a being that's only guided by what's the most, the greediest option, okay? 
So if you have two options, A and B, and A is greedier than B, they're going to choose A, right? Um, now, if you say that, um, if you're saying that God, there's something else, right? By saying that, um, God believes that splitting family, Polish families should not happen, but nonetheless is guided by something else, right? Because he allows it to occur. Okay. Then that means that number one, it seems like something non-normative mm -hmm. is guiding the actions of God. Okay. That's what it looks like to me. Okay. Something that doesn't have to do with an ought. Okay. Is more important to God than what should happen and what shouldn't happen. That's what it seems like is at stake to me so far. And, and then it just, it's not even clear what this notion of good is. Like, I don't even know what that even, yeah. this okay. like descriptive notion even means. So, that's no, fair that, enough. That, that, yeah, yeah, like, I mean, think, think about like a moral naturalist who just gives me some. I was going to say that makes, you know what I mean? I think that makes, I think that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, this is the part of the conversation um, that I want to be in right now. So thank you. Yeah, yeah. So, so really quick, just for anybody in the audience that's still confused um, about that, I don't want to take up any more time on that. So just email me if you have questions or talk to Danny or anybody else too. But yeah, I just wanted to clear that. For clarify. No, for no, that. I'm glad. It was a good audience. question because it's, it's, it's to be fair. And I'm not like it just – this is my opinion, my sentiment. But I mean the, the whole point for me about ethics, okay – is we're asking normative questions. We're asking, what should I do with my life? What should I do in this situation? And when we get our answer, this is the ethical uh, decision. We're talking about this is what should, how you should act, and this is what should happen. But if there is something else that God is interested in other than that project, then it seems like there's we're talking about a being that doesn't care about primarily about ethical questions or normative questions when they're making decisions or like if jesus should die on the cross for salvation right there's like all these weird entailments that seem to follow once you yeah so yeah. danny and and j mike both because i don't know if you guys agree on the same um under usage of you should here but um i mean i'm st i'm still kind of back on the balancing off thing here versus other other ways of cashing out what does should mean like, give me the just give me the meta ethical definition that you are using when you talk about should, right? The one that's connecting to the normative guiding principles. What does should mean here? I think well, me and what Danny. Is my, both, I, I, go ahead, Mike. Sorry. Well, I say I think we both kind of expressed that we we're going to only be able to give like some sentiment sentiments, well, synonyms. Um, but like, I mean, one way to look at it is you could divide the world into two, right? You have like um, things that ought to occur are going to be kind of on that left side that are in accord, but then we're going to be using language like in accord with or out of accord with. And I don't know that it's going to like get to the root of it because then you'll be like, well, what do you mean by in accord or out of accord when you divide the world into two and you're on the left side of what should occur? It seems like we're just filling in like synonyms. And so it seems like it's kind of like, you know, if we ask you this question, like Danny's initial question about, do you think, you know, that would be wrong? You would say pedophilia should not occur you understood that term usage. And so it seems almost like weird that we go back into this because like we seem to have the same, it's not like conceptually opaque to you, right? It seems the concept seems to be transparent. Okay. So, so, so you're saying that should is just numerically identical to an action is wrong. No, no, look, I think the, I think what's look it to me, I don't really think, or sorry, should not is an action is wrong. Should is an action is good. Well, we can use that language, but we can. We I want to know what your language is, is what I'm asking. Well, my language doesn't matter, right? It, it's an internal critique of your, of the theist view that presumably whatever their theory is, whatever their axiology is or their meta ethics, I, I, most theists think that there are events that occur and some of them should happen and some of them should but, not happen. But Danny, if you're going to, con and, and I don't mean this, like, I mean this respectfully, but if if you're going to construct an internal critique, you at least have to know the way in which the other theory is using the words. No, no, that's you. You can you can show logical problems without even understanding what the variables stand for, right? I can replace should with a variable, an unknown variable, right? X, okay. And if you if the theist says X is what's most important to God, X mm -hmm. is the is it for God? If there's more X in the situation than the other situation, God's going to go for that situation. Does, 
then you can you can de logically derive der derive conclusions from that. You don't you don't have to know what X is, right? If so, so if I say there's this being that I, I mean, I'm repeating. If, if you just no, you're good. I mean, like the, the content, right? It's going to be irrelevant given the form, right? You can just generate the conclusion. So I don't really see what well, I mean, it's it's only it's ultimately going to depend because your your conclusion is is, is much more full of content. And it's much more weightier. Than okay, I get rid of the word. I get. Let's watch this. Watch this. Okay. Suppose there's this person that believes in a super being. Okay, and this super being cares about why more than anything else. Okay, and this super being didn't have always succeeded. Okay, and was very intelligent, knew about everything. Okay, but it only cared about why. Why is the most important thing to this being, right? Now, there are two things that are about to occur. One of two things could occur, okay, A and B. Now, in A, there's more Y than B, okay? Now, can you? what can you logically derive from that? You can derive that, or at least expect, I think you can logically derive that the being will actualize A rather than B because it's stipulated that that is the primary motivator for this being notice you don't have to ask what why is you don't you don't have to have a theory of why to make that conclusion sure but then i think if this is going to be an internal critique of some theist views he'd be wondering why where the where the the preferring the whys over something else is even coming in because there has to be something about that person's worldview that involves those those variables to begin with no no look could you agree with me that there's an inconsistency on this view that if you have a super being right omnipowerful omniscient forget about the goodness right they only cared about what why is the most important the most that's what they care about the most out of anything right if there are two options that are about to occur, right, they have to decide which to actualize, A or B, and there's more Y in A than in B, right, what can you logically derive from that? Well, if given the premise that Y is the primary motivator for this being, you're going to, it's going to conclude that they're going to actualize A, right? But there would be a logical consist in inconsistency if they actualized B. Sure, yeah. I mean, I mean, well, you agree? Why Quine, Quine taught us how to make through um, through what they call analyticity, how to make statements and, and arguments and syllogisms meaningful. But wait, wait, this wait, isn't said, sure, I gotta get clear. at all. You, you agree there's an inconsistency in that, in, in what I've said, this person that believed in this such a being. Sure, yeah. Not That's the logical problem of evil, right? I just gave you the logical problem of evil, except I took out omnibenevolence and I put omniwinus, right? And so on most conceptions, I'm uh, sorry, on your conception of, mm -hmm. of theism, it's an omni goodness, but we can just replace that with why. And what's happening is that we're seeing events that have more why that could, there could have been events that had more why, right? But God doesn't actualize them. Okay. And so it seems like you're so, accepting a logical so problem. I'm, I'm going to be purposefully annoying here. Before we were, we were told, commanded actually the content of the variables we don't even have to know what they mean but now you're connecting them to events which have phenomenological content to them inherently because there's something that we experience and so i want to know if you're going to through analyticity make show me how you can make syllogisms and sentences meaningful that's fine but now we're talking, but, but that's not what we're doing. And it's not even di dialectically helpful. Do you see how it's like not dialectically helpful? Because this no theist is going to know what you're talking about. Because I don't even know what you're talking about. Like, honestly, like, okay. I just don't know what you're talking about. Okay. So to you, I think, look, I'll tell you my conclusion and I'm going to argue right. I think you conceded to me and here's why. Okay. You said that in a, in a, in a person, a person that believed in a being that was omniscient and um, all powerful and omni wineness okay, that they would be inconsistent to think that God, this being, I use the term God, that this being actualized uh, an event that had less Y than the other event, uh, another event that they could have actualized, okay? So that is how I understand the logical problem of evil because, it's, it, because you have that model that God is not omni, Y here is replaced with good, whatever it is, whether it's normative, non-normative, now it doesn't matter. Right. Danny, do you think do you think that 
not not just the logical not sorry not just evidential but all arguments from you do you think that they're at all how how relevant is axiology to this discussion to you for you actually not that relevant yeah. okay well then we're at an impasse I mean, it's, yeah. it's, 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 no, 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 I don't, no, no. I don't, wait, wait, wait. How relevant, not, wait, how no, relevant was, wait, one second, J. Mike. How relevant was the theory of whyness uh, when you concluded that this person was being inconsistent? How relevant was it? Dude, I, like like I said, that's just Quine's analyticity. Wait, can you just answer that's, the question? That's just, that's just you how said, you make sentences meaningful. Wait, when you said, when you means. said that this person was being inconsistent, how relevant was your theory of why? The, the well, obviously, there's gonna obviously the the way in which you're manipulating the terms just based on the variable. How relevant was your theory of why when you yourself determined this person was logically inconsistent? I dude, I'm agree, I'm a I'm agreeing with you that it's not relevant that through analyticity. It doesn't matter because you just uh -huh. get it that way. Okay, so you agree that your theory of whyness is not relevant to the fact that you've established that they're logically inconsistent. See, no, Danny, there's a difference between. A logical argument in its structure versus the content. Okay, you have to, in order to make a successful logical argument, you you can't just focus on the structure, but then ignore the content. That's and what we're then, saying. Okay, well then tell me, is this a logical fallacy? If a, if a then b, b therefore a. That's a that's the structure. That doesn't mm -hmm. tell me anything about what those terms actually mean. That's a valid rule. Right. Is it a, is there a fallacy there? Is there a logical problem there? That's just it a depends rule. on what the content is. No, no, that's called affirming the consequence. That's a formal fallacy. What are you talking about? So, Danny, Danny, I'm going to level with you, Hiran, because the rest of this is going to be, I, I even hate to say it because I love these discussions, man. I really, really do. And, I mean, if you read really any, any philosopher who's ever defended a logical problem, it always goes back to what the content of such events and what- Then you don't believe they're formal fallacies. So, so go ahead. Let, let, I, yeah, let me just jump in here because I think there is a big disagreement that happened that we definitely need to focus on. Because um, Danny, you said that you don't find relevance to axiology in this discussion. Tim and Kyle both think that that's a huge portion. So we only have 23, 22 minutes left until we hit the hour and a half mark. And I want to be respectful of you guys this time. Um, so it's up to you guys where you want to go. But I'm just wondering if that's well, look, something you guys I, want to focus on. I've talked a lot. So I'm personally out of just respect. I'm going to let everyone else kind of have time to go in. Cool. Well, I, I'm interested in what you have to, I mean, you, you and I have been talking the most. Um, I think that uh, we, yeah, we don't want to push the other two out. And I yeah, think that's it's fine. I mean, my internet's kind of bad anyway, so I don't really mind. Um, but look, I guess, so, go ahead. So go what's, ahead. I mean, Tim, I mean, let, let me ask you, I mean, this isn't just you, Danny, but it's also JMAC as well. What yeah. if our definition, what if someone's definition of theism explicitly requires or mentions axiology like within the definition wouldn't you think that axiology then becomes relevant to the discussion it the way that i framed the issue with the why the person that believes in b that the omni y guy okay um or the omni x guy it the theory of x or what your theory of x just will not matter so it depends on who you're framing the problem i will agree that there are formulations of the problem of evil where um, your meta-ethical views are needed. Um, but not in the, because what's interesting is that um, Tim understood, and I understood, we both understood, that this guy that believed in a being that was omni-wide, all-powerful and omniscient, right, to choose um, to actualize an event that had less why than what they could have actualized seems like they're logically inconsistent. And there you can determine that without having a theory of what omni Y is. Okay, but that's the structure that doesn't get to the actual content of the theory itself. Do you agree with Tim? You, you, you need to make that distinction before you can move forward. Do, because do almost agree? any, there is no theory of theism that is just about structure. Like we wouldn't get anywhere. Do you agree with Tim that the person that believed in this, this other being, right, is logically inconsistent? If 
they, I mean, yeah, it, because they're not formulating what the content of the theory is. So of course, if you're just talking about the structure, then it would be. Okay, so there, so your theory of why doesn't matter to determine making that determination. And it's structure, but when we get into the content about what the theory is saying, then it, the structure is just, not that it doesn't matter, but it's going to be highly, highly dependent upon what the content actually is, especially on our form of theism, where we explicitly within the definition involve axiology as a part of the definition of theism. If it's, it's a part of the definition, then it has to be relevant to this discussion. You cannot like ignore, it, otherwise we're not gonna get anywhere. Jay Mike, I wanna I I wanna hear some thoughts from you, my man. Um, yeah, you can say here. I don't know over here, but yeah, no, well, I mean, I would just I mean, I think Danny's doing a good job. He's uh, it's a lot of similar points I have, but yeah, I mean, I I really wanna get back to the whole would Jesus do this? And then the entailment, I mean, it seemed like I don't, I was, when you give a kind of an answer, like, no, he wouldn't. Um, I'm like kind of confused on the sense of what you're using, but, it, but Danny pointed out that it doesn't really matter. Right. Cause if you just are going to agree um, right from the offset, we can just show the form where you get the contra. Sorry, my voice is getting out. You can just show like the contradiction that I don't really understand why it's going to really matter about that content. As long as we are tracking the same, uh concept at the beginning right we'll be able to just derive this kind of issue but i mean i am interested on your guys point because like in, in one sense the one thing i did want to talk about on this which it might be pulling away from uh danny's points which is which is your axiological view i am genuinely just curious about that just like out of my own philosophical curiosity uh because it just seems like from your guys view from what i've read that there's just no evil in your view it just seems like all things considered there's no evil and if someone's going to express that to me in some view, it's like, well, I don't really see a problem of evil in a view where you like agree that all things considered uh, baby torture isn't wrong or something like that, right? Yeah, no, totally. I mean, is this is where you, is this where you guys want to go? Well, that's where I'm stuck between a, like a rock and a hard place because I'm yeah, that's fascinated fine. on on the where the okay. progress Danny's made. Um, so far, but yeah, I do, you guys but can I, go wherever you want with this. I feel like if we go to the axiology thing, we're going to be getting away from a lot of like the foundation that Danny's laid out so you, far. Okay, let, let's just for clarity's sake, you guys got about 18 minutes until we're at the hour and a half mark. I don't know if you guys want to have time for Q&A for audience members. And I also don't know if you guys want to cut the line at an hour and a half either. Um, so you guys can kind of make that decision. I'm fine hosting longer if you guys want to keep going and you're having a good time. Um, you guys can give my internet connection. I'm just gonna head off when we get to the hour and a half mark. Okay. Is your I mean, we can hear you fine, Kyle. I mean, you, you, what did you say? Did you say that um, when you said that you had to hop off because of your internet connection? Yeah, it's 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 not. It's not good. It's, yeah, it's, I'm it's using my I'm using data right now. That's why. Oh. Okay. Data. Yeah. But um, I don't know. Maybe I can ask you guys like just. I don't want to undo a lot of the foundation that I feel like Danny's done because I think there's a lot of progress there. But do you you guys deny that there are proto evils in your view? And so, like, would you be okay with my characterization that like all things considered, the Holocaust isn't wrong? That's like not a thing in your view. Yeah. So, so this is something I wanted to get specific about earlier, right? Which is why I said a the mere structure of the argument is dialectically unhelpful, and and this is going to help actually clarify what I meant by that, right? So we know that in ethics um, and in discussions around normativity um, that there are discussions around uh, how there can be uh, direct motivations for actions. There can be countervailing motivations for actions. Um, you have ethical contextualism, right? That the obligation that one has uh, is actually very situationally dependent which is another point about why I said that the mere structure of an argument, just m merely invoking analyticity, doesn't do anything for this discussion because it doesn't actually incorporate the nuances of moral reasoning, right? 
you've taken a bioethics class, I think before Danny, I don't think, I think you would understand that invoking analyticity and what you should do in these, you know, uh, degreed oriented uh, questions about uh, where there's black, where there's no black and white doesn't actually help anybody. That's more so what I'm saying in these situations. So if we're talking about pro toto, all things considered, meaning there's more bad in the situation than, than good in the situation. Um, uh, I don't have any problem saying that, yeah, that, that, that situation is wrong. Holocaust was wrong. Torturing babies for fun is wrong. Absolutely. But in the, in the pro toto sense, cause I think like we, we had an exchange on Facebook one time. I didn't get to respond to you, but you had, ta- you had brought up a post about saint making, I think. Right. Yeah. And I, had, I, I like commented to you and said, weren't you, aren't you worried about this entailment that like, whatever leads to saint making right so like i don't know baby like a baby just died right now for for all we know and so like presumably like if it there isn't like that's not an all things considered evil thing um but we have this kind of you know saint making thing or whatever i'm not saying that's your view but just to give an example it seems like all things considered we like that should occur right and the world is the way that it should be right now given that yeah we're, like, making saints or whatever and so that what I'm trying to draw it is it just seems like your view, like from what I understand, just does entail that like maybe there wouldn't be a problem of evil if there's just in fact no all things considered evil. Because like if for any instance, I think I point to it seems like it's going to be like the vaccine case where like we're pricking the child for a greater good, right? It might traumatize them or we might have this con that we have to outweigh. Like, um, you know, maybe like they have a traumatic experience uh or they get an allergic reaction like one of the few but like all things considered we don't want them to get polio and so we should administer this immunization and that i don't know i mean like is would you as- assent to this characterization because this seems to just like fall out of the view from what i've read when you guys deny that there are prototo um evils right it just seems like that you yeah, know, especially if you have like so, aseity and there isn't anything going against God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I want to, I want to get a clarification. And, yeah, I want to get a clarification on on how you're using prototo in this sense. So the when you're talking about there being a prototo evil, um, and you're also connecting that to the should not language, right? Um. Uh, well, like, like when you say like when you say an event, like an event E should not occur. You're you're you're. That's what you mean by like that would be a proto evil. Yeah. I mean, if someone has a descriptive notion, I guess I have an inquiry. I just don't really understand what they're. So yeah. Cause, cause, cause that's going to help me um, as carefully as I can answer this question for you, or at least clarify. Like, I my think people would say, Oh, I made a mistake. Like I sinned last night and I should not have done that. Right. Like that's going to be a meaningful type of use of the language. Okay. Gotcha. It's really so, hard for me to believe that like majority of theists yeah, um, it'd be interesting to see because some people have. Sorry, what? I said it would be really hard for me to swallow. I mean, I don't want to have like some type of incredulity, but like, I don't know. Every theist I've ever talked to so far is pretty, pretty consistent on being like, yeah, that's that's not a conceptually opaque to me. In fact, that's like my term usage. Yeah, that's fine. Um, but then you know, in philosophy, we we especially analytic philosophy, we rigorously. Yeah, sure. I want always want to be always leave the philosophical door open for sure. Yeah. So. Because in in that sense, when you talk about sin, that to me is more so of it sounds like the language is um, they have in mind what they sh- what is they have in their mind of what is worthy of pursuing and what isn't worthy of pursuing, and so they ought to pursue what's worthy of pursuing, which is not sin, which is union with God. I think that's how most Christians would say I shouldn't have sinned because my t loss is with God, right? Mm-hmm. So that's how I'd understand that, that that's more so a recognition of uh, something intrinsically valuable, right? And if you take a definition of intrinsic value that I take, um, any fully informed or properly functioning valuer um, would desire some X for its own sake, right? Um, yeah, but like, like the free will to sin or to have sins, you know, commit, that's something that's all things considered good, right? Sorry, say it again. So like the ability, like the free will to like sin or something like that, you, would you characterize that as like an all things considered good? Okay, so now we're bringing in all things considered language. What do you what do you have in mind when you say that? Uh, well, this like was explained in the out, beginning, right? Yeah. Like the well, point is, is that in ethics, we're asking in, whether we're in a dilemma or we're asking even a simple question, like what, what is the good life? 
we're asking about what we should do in a particular situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, t I totally understand that. I'm, 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 I'm wanting to know what the all con things considered part means because one of the things well, you, I took in my notes. If you understand that, then you're under you've grasped the concept. No, yeah. I'm, I'm wanting you guys to clarify that for me because sure. what well, I you, in my why would we do that when you understand it? No, I, I, I don't know if I do understand the way you guys are using it, which is why I'm wanting the clarification. Okay, were you the same sense when we're talking about? What should I do in this moral dilemma? The answer to that question about what you should do is the all things considered good. Okay, but I'm wondering what the all things considered means. You don't know what it means. No, what I what I have in my notes is this, and I put a question mark after this, is all things, con so if something's all things considered good, is it, is it after we've summed up all of the good and bad consequences that- No, 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 it, look, take, take the example, right? You are driving. You recognize someone is having a heart attack on the side of the road. You have the ability to call 911. Now I'm asking you, Tim, what should you do? So I am wanting my question answered because that will help me answer this question because I want to know how you, you, how you, you mean by What this. would you say to me? What would you at least say? It doesn't matter what I, what I would say. In, no, in I'm moment. trying to – you're trying to understand us, right? And so I'm helping you understand us by – a successful application of the terms, right? Because here's what I would say, Tim. I would say the right thing to do, what you should do, Tim, is call 911. Now, do you okay. agree? So the so the so should is the right thing to do. So where does all things considered come in? It's but there there might look it there could be reason like you'll be late for work or you know they're gonna you know you're gonna you have, have to like, cons, like yeah they're, they're basically okay. they're all yeah, there you go thank you weighing something pro and con and when the pros outweigh the cons you should then that's what you should do yeah, but outweigh doesn't mean it's not like we're uh, committed to any particular normative theory there right like the the point is is that you've understood the concept of what Wait, it but did you agree with mike when he said pro and con yeah but look when you say the word way you're assuming a particular axiology are you not so how how am i supposed to so if i say it's going to be irrelevant of how, you, like, it, whatever view you have, you'll be weighing. It's the quote unquote weighing it out of the pros and cons. It's baked. It's like you're using the normative terms pro and con, like, and it's all things considered a pro, you, right? I mean, I yeah. So the all considered things being a pro is that I don't see what what framework. It's the answer to the it. question. What the sense of ought that we're expressing is the very answer to the question about what you should do in that situation. See, so it sounds like that. When we say all things all are all things considered, there are more pros than cons. Uh, look, uh, do you? I'm 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 struggling. I think you understand what I'm I saying. I wouldn't go with the quantity of the look it, because you're look you're what you're trying quantity, to do right quantity, now quality, is you're trying you're trying to hold us down to a particular normative theory or moral theory. We're not no, by, no, okay. No. Well, then if you're not doing that, then you should understand what the question number one: What should you do? Right. What should you no, do? I'm, 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 I can be completely ignorant as much as possible until I gain an understanding here. Wait, if some, if if someone asked you, in in the case of the heart attack case, right, where you're driving to work and you see someone getting a heart attack, right, um, and you have the op you have the ability to call nine one one. Do you understand the utterance, or how, would you? Is there a good interpretation that you have in mind when you when if you were to ask yourself or someone to ask you what should you do in that case? Yeah, and that's perfectly fine, but I want the most rigorous understanding of that, not the situation understanding, the most you rigorous are. understanding right now. Look, part of if you're trying, there are many ways to grasp the concept. One way is I can give a lexical definition of odd, but if I just you're want the philosophical definition, man, right? But I'm if your goal is simply to grasp the concept, then we've succeeded already. If you were to say, I understand what it means to say that I should call 911 and not drive and continue to drive to work. You sure. And then, and then, yeah. And so underneath that, then if I agree, then if I, then underneath that, is this when I perceive that there is more good than bad to be pursued in that situation? Is that what that would mean? It, no, I, I mean, it doesn't have to imply any of that. It can imply, you could mean like by ought, you could mean like um, bananas. It doesn't matter, oh, right? Okay. Like the, the, the point is, is that, Okay. Um, you've understood that like, okay, well, if you, if you're not even saying you understood, I, I don't know what to do with that, man. I'm sorry. What do you mean? I'm, well, you I'm, don't know what to do. Look, if you, uh, you've told me you've rushed the concept, right? Where in the case, what, I mean, maybe I have, I mean, I have my own understanding. I'm, I just want to know how that's you guys all know. we need. Know, your own understanding. understand how confusing it is that like at several, it seems like at different points you've said, like, I understand. And then we've 
we went through like a, a whole long stint of well to get, to get and then you said the, the, the reason now we're back to like i don't understand i mean like i could just make the move when you ask a question that i don't understand the word i don't but like i i do understand well, it's not a know. move like like it's not a it's not a move that i'm making i'm just saying that even if i have my own understanding right um my underst own understanding can lead to vastly different implications than your guys's understanding that's fine but then all that's relevant right is your understanding of should or should not or whatever all things considered should or should not and how it, god relates to it that's all that matters it doesn't yeah. you don't have, so axiology is relevant to the conversation no no you don't all you have to say look just like with the the omni wineness right you're saying there is this thing you have a certain axiology about the good right now i'm just asking whatever that axiology is is the good most more is there anything more important than the good to god under no, your axiom no right so now no, 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 they, now at that point the logical problem um can can be run okay because it can in, doesn't mean that it's uh going to be valid no i don't okay think so. but the point is is that we've moved we don't need the axiology anymore oh no we do because that's no, what's no, going because to you've said, the rest of it you've it's said contained sorry go ahead so long as you've said that nothing else is more important than the good. Uh, nothing else is more important than the good to God. Then I can derive entailments from that. Do you think that God can have um, countervailing motivations for pursuing um, instrumental versus intrinsic goods? If you're asking me, is is there something more important than the good? That would contradict your statement. So no. Well, I mean, but I'm I'm asking. I'm just using the run of the mill intrinsic value versus instrumental value distinction. Do you think that God can have? I don't know. Look, I don't know what any. I mean, I know what instrumental means, right? I know intrinsic. Maybe you're talking about the internet itself. But like the the point is, is that how now we're equivocating between different senses of good here, right? But the only relevant sense of good. Is a sense of good that you are saying is the yeah. is nothing nothing is more important than it to God. That's right. the but if it relates to evil, good then, here. What? But if it if it relates to evil, then then this question of if God can have overriding motivations for authorizing certain evils and the pursuit of something different, uh, I think that would actually be relevant to the conversation. Not just stick with this very vague, ambiguous. Um, the good is the most important, right? Because are we talking about good on the whole? Are we talking about a balancing off understanding of good? Do we mean sufficiently good? Do we mean none of that? Ma they, uh, those look like just equivocations on good, right? You're saying there's. I don't this, think so. I think they actually have different meanings. Okay, if they're all the same, is something? Are you if you if you've already stipulated that nothing is more important that to uh, uh nothing is more important to God than the good, right? Then to ask, is there anything more important than uh or or something overriding um when we're looking at this good? The answer is just no. No, that, that's that's um, that's not what I'm actually talking about. Um, okay, I'll, what? Okay, are you not asking? Right, we've already established that there's a sense of good, whatever it is. We'll we can just put a variable, big G, G, capital G. Okay, are there going to be? Is there going to be anything that God cares more about than big G? No, but I want to know okay. what big G is. We don't need to know that. Right. So then where does the because, logical look, problem think come about, in? Because you man, remember, you managed to agree with me of the logical inconsistency of the being that believe in omni wineness and yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I know we're back to this point, but but that's dialectically unhelpful because it, I don't know if why. my that's my <laughs> argument. What do you mean? <laughs> look, here's the argument, right? If a being is omni wineness, meaning why not the being doesn't care about anything. If, um, other than why, primarily, that there's nothing that's more motivating than why, right? Then if this being is all-powerful and omniscient and all those other categories, other than omnibenevolence, he's just omniwineness, okay? Then a person would be contradicting themselves if they were to, if the being was to actualize an event um, that has less why than an event that they should, they could have actualized. Notice notice that we don't need to know what why is. It's the same thing. Instead of why, we're talking about big yeah. G. But can, you can have levels of importance, right? So when you say nothing is more important, you can have levels of importance. Those things can still be worth pursuing for their own sake. But then there's this big thing over here that's still worth pursuing the most. It's going to trump. None of that other matters. None of that oh, matters. then I don't agree with that then. That's okay, then, it, then there's something more motivational to God than Big G. Sure. So there's something more important than the good to God. Whatever. What, I, I just want to know what that is, man. Okay, so you're... 
you're do you understand the concession here? The concession is, is that a being that's essentially all good, omnibenevolent, has other things that are more important to him other than the good. What no, I, I, I'm I'm just wanting to know what that this whole idea of more of more important meaning that he won't pursue anything else. Uh, not really understanding that too much because I don't really hear anybody talking like that. This whole idea of um, if this is the only thing that's more important, then there nothing else will be pursued, right? Like I, I see what you're trying to do with that, but um, one, I just don't know what the I don't know what is contained in those terms to have an actual helpful conversation about it. And two, um, if there's no levels of importance, if, if it's binary, then I don't really see a reason to believe that. What do you think I'm saying? Don't those, so. I don't know. If, I mean, you, I'm not con, I'm not confident that you've understood me. It might be that you've understood me, but I'll, rather than asking you to repeat what I'm saying, I'm going to repeat it one more time. And you interrupt me when I get off the train here, when I'm not making sense. When people tell me, God is omnibenevolent. God is all good. I feel like they're trying to tell me that there's nothing else that's more important than the good to God. Yeah, and more important meaning that he would never pursue intermediately level uh, levels that, of good. That if you're there could is there something other than the good that will motivate God's decisions? So that if the other than the good in your and this is just clarification. On your view. I haven't even given my view. So I'm just asking what you mean. No, no. You, you did. You do think that God is omnibenevolent. But I'm wondering what you mean by that. If not, that good motivates all of God's decisions. Right. Yeah. So you're so you're using. Yeah. You're, you're. I'm using. I'm asking about your view. Well, you're starting off with a view that I don't really understand too well. It doesn't really seem to cohere with my Wait, view. Do you know what it means? You understood with wine. You understood the greedy example, right? Let's take the greedy example. No, okay. no, no, no. Let's go back. Let's go back. We're not going to switch examples. Let's go back to the original. Well, you're, I'm not having a difficult. I'm not having difficulty understanding. That's, no, it's, I'm not having difficulty either. This yes, is, you this are. Is, okay, characterize what I'm saying. So hold on. Uh, first of all, we're at we're a little at, we're over at, we're at two minutes over. So just letting you guys know that. Um, oh. and I know I've said this already, but I think this huge disagreement still is here. Where Danny, oh, that was my cat like that meowed. It's into the microphone. It's all good. It sounds like Danny, you're saying axiology doesn't matter, um, and it sounds like Tim is saying no, it absolutely does. Well, and, go ahead. My the clarifying question that I was going to go with, what we were just talking about, what is is if Big G, let's say, is the main motivator, whatever that is, like is that's what we call the good, and Danny says that if God pursue something else than that, then there's either something more important to him uh, than that, or something else motivates God. Um, I just want to know if that is in terms of layers of importance. So like big G is like the main, the, the main thing that God is pursuing, but, uh, but along the way, he recognizes that there are, there are different degrees of importance, but this has the largest degree of importance. If that's what you mean, if these minor degrees of importance is what you mean by God is motivated by something else, I can say two oh, things can be true at once. You can have a, the main motivation and then you can have um, these these layers of importance that actually are relevant to the to the, to the big G. Is that possible? Look, look here, if, if I say that the main motivator of my- Well, it was a yes or no question, right? No, that no, that's not my, what I'm saying. The answer is no. Okay, well then I okay, no, with that. I'm not saying that. Or no, no, no. I thought you were just trying to characterize me. Because that's yeah, not I characterized really, it and I asked you if that's what you mean. That's not that. an accurate characterization. It might be my okay, fault. Yeah, go ahead, it go might ahead. be my fault. Okay, to be fair, I'm not blaming you for that, but just yet. But the, the, the point is that if I am an all greedy being, okay, that means that if I'm choosing between two two options, one is more greedy than the other. Okay, I'm going to choose the greedy option given the property of being omni greedy. Now, so you're going to choose the more greedy option, what you're saying? Because I'm omni greedy. Right. So, what I'm saying is, we have, I, I disagree with that because there are other, there are other ethical theories that I find plausible, like ethical contextualism. Wait, what do you disagree with? 
So I'm going to say I'm going to disagree with that characterization. That that's what, what characterization? That um, do you do you, the greedy? You you disagree with the greedy case because that just seems like it logically follows that if I'm an mm -hmm. if I'm an all greedy being, okay, what would that mean other than to say that if there's two options, one's more greedier than the other, then I'm going to do the more greedy one? No, you're going to need an intermediary proposition to make that not a non sequitur, man. What do you think it means to say that I'm all greedy? That's, I don't know. That's why you need the intermediary proposition Presumably, because it's a non sequitur at this point. When you're right? telling, when you're telling someone, Hey, this dude, he's greedy person. You're telling them their motivations for acting. Yeah. That, yeah sure. But yeah, I don't know exactly what that looks like on a event to event level. For that what do you person. mean? What it look, I, that's what it looks like that they're motivated by greed. Yeah. Like an all chocolate covering god that covers all the universe in chocolate right and there's a speck it seems like we're making this weird move where it's like yeah but well yeah well if you, if you say like, like, all, Mike, i love your example the universe god would be like, i love your example because if you say if there's a if you say that there's a god who desires to cover the universe on all of chocolate that's actually more specific than what danny actually brought up wait what i brought up greed what are you talking look <laughs> if i say that this this guy is a greedy person does that predict what they're what they're going to do or what they're motivated motivated by? Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna pursue greed. So what are however, you talking about? They, they however, might... however, that's not enough to be to making to make the case when we're talking about an all good god that you're trying that you think it's doing. And the reason why is this: is you said that if there's an all good being, it logically necessitates that if A uh, has some uh, has some lower degree of good and beast has some higher degree of good just in this simple on on a on a napkin evaluation you're saying that that means that he's going to choose the one with the higher degree of goodness and i'm saying man no i don't agree with that you're okay, going to need an intermediary proposition to justify that when you're describing someone's character let's say as humble or honest or greedy or whatever right what are you doing but indicating what they're motivated by prime uh in in and to some degree yeah but but danny if i say that there is somebody who has who is of good character and i trust them right that's that's fine but then when you try to give me oh but then when there's a and then there's b what i'm saying is someone of good character can based on the context this is a natural theory. It's called ethical contextualism. Based on the context, their obligations, based on their character, can actually differ on what they do with A or B. I'm not. That's look, the whole point of us bringing out the question. content. We have to know the content, right? Because I find ethical contextualism quite plausible, just personally. And I, I, in this, I in this scenario, you want me to negate that. So that's why I have a problem. Look, with. Like, look, look, look a question for you. I say that you. Let's say you're a father. All right, and you're thinking about hiring a babysitter, okay? And I tell you that the babys it's not that's not a very good babysitter. Now, let's say it's a ba bad babysitter. Does now question if you're if the babysitter is presented with two options, right? A bad option and a good option. If you agree that they are a bad babysitter, on your view, what are they more likely to do? Yeah, but you're you're making a logical problem. This is this, this we're now talking about probability. I'm going to get to the logical problem. We're going to state Let's one babysitter. Don't don't go into likelihood. No, I want to get into likelihood. I want to ask. That's go not, ahead. That's not what we're debating. We're not debating. I, I know that, but just answer the question. Trust. I trusted you last. Remember when you said, trust me and I let you talk? Now trust me and answer the question. Yeah, this is actually so irrelevant to the conversation. So okay, I'm fine, actually then not going to Look, the the, you're, this isn't going to be bad for you because I'm going to show you how it was relevant, okay? Since you refused to answer the question. Yeah. If someone said that a bad babysitter... Um, that there was a, a bad babysitter and don't hire them, then I'm going to think that it's likely that if they're presented with in a dilemma, that they're going to choose the bad option over the good option. That's the question you refuse to answer. And what that shows is that if you maximize it, right, not no longer are you saying is the babysitter bad, but that she's all bad, okay? No longer is a probabilistic claim, right, or a probabilistic assessment. You're not saying that she's likely to choose the bad option or the good option when you say that it's a bad babysitter. You're saying you're saying that if she's all bad, she will necessarily take the bad option. Okay. And I you see, I don't know why we refuse to answer. So the I actually have a counter example. I actually have a counter narrative to this. You can, and this is what Stephen Law talks about, right? So when Stephen Law does his evil God challenge, Danny, I totally understand what you're talking about, man, but 
what I'm going to say is it's this is not giving you the mileage you think it's giving you. I, don't even think I'm going to, I dare you to characterize me. I'm going to give you the Stephen Law example. Stephen Law says, I don't think if we had a maximally evil God, then we could do a reverse theodicy. We could say that um, all of the goods that the evil God authorized in this world is only for one purpose, which is to disappoint us all in the end, that he gave us all these goods by taking them away from us and like throwing us into a hell situation. So actually in even Stephen Law's example, you have a situation where an evil being would choose good, but for a certain period of time, so that it eventually results in evil. And that was, and I basically just did the reverse when I first What's responded the, to you. What does this have to do with the babysitter analogy? Because what I'm saying, it's more nuanced than what you're saying. Do you understand the babysitter analogy? I do, but do you understand okay, what I do? I dare you to char characterize me. But wait, hold on, Danny. Do you? Do you? Do I don't you, think you do. do. You understand, I could be wrong. Do you I don't understand think you the do. nuances of what I just said. What you said is totally irrelevant. Okay. Because well, you failed to understand my analogy. Definitely pass it off to everyone else. Well, no, 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 don't yeah. run. Don't run. Oh, I'm not running. Man, I'm not then, running. Then, then tell me what I, the analogy. Yeah, the I just, I'm, just choo I'm just choosing at this point. I think that. Okay. If you're going to tap I out, let me, then I'll wrap this up. Okay. I'll yeah. give you the last word. I'm going to wrap this up. Here's the analogy because Tim didn't get it. Okay. The analogy is this. You tell someone that this babysitter is a bad babysitter. That gives you a probabilistic reasoning about what they might do in a situation where they're choosing between good or bad. That they're likely to choose the bad option or the good option rather than the good option. Now, what happens when you say that the babysitter is omni-bad or all bad? No longer are you doing a probabilistic assessment. The notion of an omni-bad or an all an all bad is that there's a logical necessitation when the babysitter is presented between two options, one good and one bad, they will always take the bad option. Okay. So if you say God is all good, when you're two, when you have two options, one is bad and one is good without equivocating on the terms, that being is going to choose the good option. If they're omni good, if they don't, then there's something that's more important than the good. And they're thus, they're not all good that they're mostly good or they're 99.99% good. All right, guys, with that, uh, J. Mike, I know you've been up since 3 a.m. and I know you're tired. Um, yeah, he's good. He, you're good, man. Thanks for participating, bro. Yeah. Um, and Kyle's got Sorry about the Wi Fi. Well, I don't know. <laughs> if you guys want to continue, yeah. that, that's fine. Um, uh, I don't want to like disrupt it or anything, but yeah, no, no, you, no, you guys Kyle are good. good too, as well. Um, so, but, um, go ahead. If you, have, yeah, if you have a last thought you want to put in, J. Mike, go ahead. Uh, cheese is really good. Huh? Cheese. cheese. It's really you delicious. Cheese? Yeah, it's really delicious. You're smoking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Dude before that. No. Um, Typical atheist, man. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> no, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot. I mean, my frustration is, I, I get as. I feel like there could be more progress. I don't want to, to steer anything towards Tim like negatively, but like the only problem is that it's like hard. It feel like at a lot of the turns, it was like, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? And I, I mean, that game, I mean, I, I don't think you're being dishonest, but it, it's at times you seem to track the concepts, but then revert. Like it felt like it was a pitfall if you did. And I don't know if that's an accurate characterization, but um, I, I don't know. I just, See, yeah, Jim, like, you, you and I progressed a, a little further between you and Danny. I thought I didn't think that those some of those questions were really like that difficult to answer. So I, I'm a little confused by all that personally. I mean, that's kind of my general takeaway from the conversation. Yeah, no, I yeah, the way the conversation went, probably see how things can be jumbled together like that. You and I can though, we can uh, have a private conversation at some point so I can actually uh, get you know, with uh, my full attention to what you were asking. Yeah, yeah we could do like that. if you want to come on Axioms or if you got a channel, we could just shoot shoot the stuff. I was just thinking how having a phone call. Nice. Well to... Oh, whatever, anything and everything. Yeah. Whatever, yeah. J. Mike and I do private phone calls. Cool. Phone calls yeah, we can totally do. We can redeem that situation, and then hopefully we can clear up any of the. Uh, no, yeah, no worries. I mean, I, I yeah, uh, I enjoyed and, the the conversations. And really quick, really for <laughs> not to cut you off, J. Mike, but for the people in the chat too, like. These types of conversations get passionate and that there's nothing wrong with the fact that people get passionate about this. So um, just cool it in the chat. <laughs> That's all I'll say there. Um, 
it's a good thing that we're getting passionate about these things. The fact that people get passionate about these things shows that they care about these things. And that's why we're here. We care about what's true. We care about all these things. So, um, Kyle, you got anything else you want to add in? No, I mean, I think one way to think about it is like, you know, Tim brought up the evil God challenge. I mean, yeah, I mean, I could imagine an evil God making, giving us good things um and then just taking them away it seems like that would be a worse that would make the world worse off than if there was only a world of just evil by itself um so if that works then you can just do the opposite with with a good god hypothesis so so yeah i got you anybody else have anything else they want to do with concluding remarks oh well i i want to speak just i guess a little bit on the content of being a little um I was more kind of just discussing their issue. Um, I, I one thing I want to talk about in the future is because I didn't I didn't really get an answer to it when I was talking with Tim. I think it kind of steered back into your guys' conversation, which is perfectly fine. Um, but I just it doesn't seem like um, it seems like the entailment from like what at least what I understand about your guys' view is just that there are no all things considered evils, at least from what what I've read in the document from what I understood. And I don't know if that's fair characterization, but I'd like to maybe have a conversation about that because I, um, I have an argument that's unique to me, given that you, uh, affirm that premise that I think shows issues for Christianity and the atonement of Jesus. And so I'm interested in talking about that argument with you, if you guys would like to, but I also don't know if that characterizes your view. Maybe there's more, uh, semantic discussion there to talk about. I'd like to comment on what Kyle said without saying, without saying in a way where he's going to feel like he wants to respond. So it'll be pretty neutral, but um, I would, I would think that if someone did believe in evil God, there would be the logical problem of the good. So, so I, I, Kyle stipulated if that, if so, if it were, you know, and I would agree with Kyle that um, if the, if the objections to the, the evil God can be overcome, then the objections to the good God can be overcome. I would actually agree with that. But I think that where where I would want to say is that, um, the objections to the all evil God are going to be as forceful as the objections to the all good God, uh, in my opinion. I hope I didn't say that in a way where you feel like, yeah. You, you no, that's like, fine. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Um, <clears throat> just for your for J. Mike and Christian uh, idealism, I don't know why I kind of keep saying that instead of just Kyle, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> for J. Mike and Kyle, um, I'm not going to do a QA. and a Nobody did any super chats, so I don't feel guilted into doing a q a <laughs> okay so no problem uh, yeah we could just end the stream then if that's that's fine yeah you now. guys go to bed thank you everybody yeah, for listening cool. uh -huh. um and i hope the conversation was helpful if you have questions let me know yeah i want to thank you we, well i we all want to thank you um it's, yeah. it's an honor to be on exploring reality um uh so i really so thanks for having me on and, and thanks for hosting yeah it's a privilege to have you guys man Hopefully. i'm excited about your debate man uh, with matt I yeah mean, i know i low key not, like i want to share my opening statement on all my notes with you jay mike but i'm like you're also you like that information like, yeah. to the yeah, enemy yeah, right exactly. with matt and i'm like and i i told matt like i hey, wouldn't do that and matt wouldn't want me to do that i don't think so, i told i know. told matt i told matt that we can exchange like opening statements and rebuttals um but he didn't want to so um, yeah truth over tea thanks for the two bucks man i can go to taco bell after my surgery no it should be good i think i think you guys will pair really well when when john geary kind of floated it that way i was like oh man that that's actually really good that's a that should be really i'm nervous to debate him but by the way tim christian uh, and tim and kyle if you wait you're you nervous want... sam i think you guys I, will actually have a, a really i i am incredible well, i mean dan, dan danny and j mike j mike like you and i we've both kind of debated each other and like argue with each other and like it's no secret that i just suck at rhetoric like, I don't. I, I think you. I don't. I'm yourself a little too. My nervous. money is on you, Than. Honestly, I'm nervous. I'm nervous. We, we talked. Uh, we, what, we, had what, that, we finally like me and you went at it one time with like the worldview comparison stuff and simplicity and explanatory, uh, you know, breadth and depth. And yeah, I thought me and you both like held our own pretty well there. I mean, well, we went, you know, so, so I don't think I don't think that you were like rhetorically impoverished or something like that i think oh no I, okay but like here's the thing like matt's just really good matt's a really good rhetorician like and and he uses rhetoric very intentionally in debate settings where like when you and i had that conversation 
I didn't feel like I needed to use rhetoric because you weren't using that. You were you weren't like weaponizing it against me. Yeah, that might have been a bad example. Of nine yeah, hindsight. The thing, <laughs> I could be wrong about this. I could be wrong about this, but I, I it sound it when I watch a Matt Dillahunty debate, it seems like his sauciness, his spiciness, his rhetoric sort of matches his interlocutor. So the fact that you're really chill, I feel like his rhetoric will chill. Yeah, I mean, Hopefully. I mean, and and then I then you have, I think, an edge because so long as you keep your composure, which is I can't imagine they're losing composure, um, the 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 substance will be more highlighted than not. Hold on, was my mic? Yeah, yeah, it was messed up. I knew there was something wrong, and I was so stupid. I should have, all things considered, told you something. I made a mistake. I'm so not. sorry, everybody. I'm so sorry, You're good, man. <laughs> And honestly, uh, um, and when, look, I mean, it'd be like the same thing if a bunch of like, you know, really, you know, typical kind of internet atheists came up and just started like calling in a Thea show and giving bad objections. I, after doing like a few years of atheist experience and having some like, you know, my grandpappy believed this. And so I believe it full conviction. When you deal with that, you get really frustrated quick. Um, and so oh, yeah. I don't know, maybe I'm bailing them out, but I've, I've gotten more pissy. And then when I, like talk to people who are like into philosophy or a theist i'm more like oh, okay sweet like i don't feel like i'll have to like get all pissed off because like we're gonna have a good conversation you know a slam rn if you said something in the beginning i'm so sorry i didn't see it i was focusing on uh trying to get things going well i appreciate the kind words guys and we yeah, can man. talk more about this offline too maybe you guys can help me see some things better um but for you, now man um thank you everybody for listening again it was a privilege to host this discussion hopefully um you guys both parties felt like i was able to kind of cut through mm -hmm. and not be biased or anything like that mm -hmm. um let's try maybe we can do a uh, a part two based on the most um what would you call it um misunderstandings based on this conversation um, just focus yeah. on those. If you guys want to have a part two, I, I, I know the audience really wanted it. Um, okay and I know that there was a lot of disconnect impasses between Mike, Danny, and I, some stuff with Kyle. So that yeah. might be productive. In the I future. think, uh, yeah, I, I'm down for host that. We can talk about that in our group chat. Um, and um, if we do that, then we can probably structure it a little bit more so that way we know what we want to talk about, how much time we want to dedicate. And it'll probably happen after my debate. And then after my debate with Dale Hunty, I'm also planning on just taking a week off because sure. yeah. uh, I'll be finally recovered from my from my health issues after about two years of them. And I just kind of want to take a week to be a normal person. <laughs> and and um, I I know that we disagree on this. Um, you know, I don't really think moral theories are that important to the logical problems that I give. I know that y'all disagree, but. We could frame a discussion in a way where we have to flush out our moral theories, and there's no there's no ambiguity about that. So uh, maybe we could talk about most plausible yeah. theories for, you know, uh, I guess meta ethics. If there were a god, like what would be a plausible theory? You know, I I'm fine to debate stuff like that. You know, I'm I'm interested in meta ethics and stuff like that. But um, I know that we don't share that opinion about the implications of meta meta ethical meta ethical implications and logical problem of evil but i am still nonetheless interested in that topic yeah that that, that sounds like more of a like a meta kind of conversation so like meta principles or something like that that'd be interesting yeah for sure yeah and i can right, uh, i can do oh, the uh, so you uh we'll do the world vote view comparison right and i'll just do an oppie thing with you guys if you also <laughs> be interested there you go I, all right, guys. All right, guys. Thank you again for coming on. Till next time, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, absolutely.